Hi Adams, this is Miss K, and for lesson eight today, we're going to be talking about the three different kinds of rocks and what the rock cycle is. So here's your vocab for today. The first word is mineral, that's a noun, and it is a solid, non-living substance found in the earth, and it makes up rocks. So rocks are made up of those minerals. Second word we learned in science, texture, which is the size, shape, and sorting of the mineral grains and rocks. So how those minerals feel um, when they make up the rock. Solidify is a verb to make or become hard or solid. Obsidian is a noun, and that is a dark rock that's formed from lava that cools very quickly. Granite is a noun that is a common ig igneous rock. We'll talk about what that means. And it forms when magma is cooled within Earth's crust. Durable is an adjective, and that means able to last a long time in good condition. Compact is a verb to closely pack or press together. And then dissolved is an adjective mixed with liquid, so no solid pieces are visible anymore. So this is chapter six, Earth's building blocks. And our big question for today is how can changes in rocks over time be explained by the rock cycle? You don't have to look hard to find rocks. They are all around you and under you too. Earth's crust is made almost entirely of rocks. Mountains, hills, and cliffs are huge masses of rock that form landscape features. Pebbles in a stream are smooth, rounded rocks. Chunky bits of broken rock from the gravel on a country road. Rocks go into making sidewalks and streets. Slabs of rock cover the outside of many buildings. Indoor pieces of rock often make up floors, walls, stairs, and countertops. Museums are good places to see rocks that artists have carved into sculptures. The polished stones in some types of jewelry are rocks that people wear. And our caption here says rocks are all around. Some are carved into sculptures. Others are used for jewelry. All the varieties of rocks can be organized into three classes. So what are rocks exactly? Rocks are naturally occurring minerals I'm sorry, materials made of solid, non-living substances called minerals. Think of minerals as the building blocks of rocks. Some rocks are formed from just one mineral. Most rocks, however, are combinations of two or more minerals. Minerals appear as different sized pieces or grains in rocks. Some rocks have very tiny mineral grains, giving the rocks a smooth, even texture. Other rocks have larger mineral, mineral grains and a rougher texture. Imagine hiking up a mountain and picking up rocks along the way. When you reach the top, you'll probably have quite a collection. Your rocks may have different colors and textures. Some may have stripes or layers. Some might be hard and others crumbly. Some have tiny grains, whereas others have large grains that glitter when they catch the light. All this variety might seem confusing, yet geologists organize all rocks into just three classes or basic types, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. So first we're going to talk about the igneous rock. Let's start with igneous rocks, the most abundant class of rocks on Earth. Igneous rocks form when magma cools and solidifies. When you think of igneous rocks, think of volcanoes. <clears throat> Excuse me. There are two basic types of igneous rock. One forms from magma that erupts onto Earth's surface as lava. The lava cools and hardens into rock. The faster it cools, the smaller the mineral grains will be in the resulting rock. Obsidian is an igneous rock formed from lava that cools very quickly. So quickly, there wasn't enough time for the minerals to form grains. As a result, obsidian is as smooth and shiny as glass. In fact, it is often called volcanic glass. Basalt is an igneous rock formed from lava that took longer to cool. Basalt is typically a dark colored rock. It has fairly small mineral grains that give it a fine grained texture. The second type of igneous rock forms from magma that solidifies below Earth's surface. 
Magma cools very slowly when it's deep beneath the surface. Slow cooling leads to igneous rocks with relatively large mineral grains. The slower the cooling, the larger the grains. Granite is a common igneous rock that forms from magma that cooled within Earth's crust. Granite usually contains mineral grains that are large enough to see with the naked eye. And here are some of those different types of igneous rocks. The art of making stone tools. Many prehistoric cult cultures made tools out of rock. Scientists working in East Africa have found obsidian tools, obsidian stone tools that are nearly 2 million years old. Obsidian was especially prized by ancient tool makers. Obsidian breaks into pieces with sharp edges that are good for cutting and piercing. To make a very sharp cutting tool, ancient tool makers struck a block of obsidian with another harder rock. This caused a long, thin blade of obsidian to flake off. Although the blade was fragile, it had incredibly sharp edges. In fact, the edges of obsidian blades are much sharper than metal scalpels used by surgeons today. Making a spear tip or arrowhead was more time consuming. The toolmakers started with a relatively flat piece of obsidian. They shaped it by striking off tiny flakes of rock one after another from the edges. They gradually shaped it into a sharp, durable, and often beautiful pointed tool. That is a spear tip, and these are arrowheads. All right, sedimentary rock is the second major class of rocks. Sedimentary rocks are made of sediments. Sediments are tiny bits of rock and sand combined with fragments of once living things. Sediments collect in low-lying areas both on land and in bodies of water. They form layers, one on top of another. Over long periods of time, the weight of overlying layers compacts the sediments into deeper layers, squeezing them closer together. Sediments also become cemented or glued together as dissolved minerals fill the spaces between the sediments. As the sediments dry, the dissolved minerals turn into solids, binding the sediments together. Over time, compacting and cementing processes transform sediments into sedimentary rock. And this picture is showing that happening. So the weight of these layers, it's compacting them, squeezing them together, and um, pushing those sediments together to create a rock. Most sedimentary rocks are more easily broken than igneous rocks. Hit a sedimentary rock with a hammer and it will crumble or break apart. Some sedimentary rocks contain fossils. Limestone is a sedimentary rock often packed with the fossilized skeletons and shells of tiny ocean creatures. Some sedimentary rocks get their name from sediments. Sandstone started as grains of sand, whereas mudstone formed from ancient mud. And this is showing some sedimentary rocks in the Badlands National Park in South Dakota. And you can see the layers here. The older layers are at the bottom, the newer layers are on the top. All right, and our third category is metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rocks form when igneous or sedimentary rocks are exposed to extreme heat and pressure. They can even form from older metamorphic rocks. High temperatures and crushing pressure alters the minerals in the rocks. Mineral grains may be flattened or rearranged into layers, swirls, or stripes. They may also be changed into completely different minerals. Remember granite, the igneous rock? When granite is subjected to intense heat and pressure, it becomes a metamorphic rock called gneiss. When the sedimentary rock limestone is squeezed and heated deep below ground, it becomes a metamorphic rock called marble. Metamorphic rocks tend to form deep within Earth's crust. The pressure from countless tons of overlying rock is tremendous. Equally powerful is the heat rising from hot magma in the mantle beneath the crust. Metamorphic rocks often form where tectonic plates are slowly colliding. They can also form as magma travels up through cracks in Earth's crust and heats the rock around the cracks. If the heat of the magma completely melts the rock again, then it becomes igneous rock. If the rock is heated just enough to be changed, however, it instead becomes metamorphic rock.
All right, and here's a little diagram showing us here's the Earth's surface. All that weight of those rock layers and the metamorphic rock is being formed because of all that heat and pressure. All right, so this is a Zimbabwean sculptor, Agnes Nyahongo. She became interested in carving rock at an early age. Her father, Claude Nyahongo, was a sculptor. She worked in his studio as a young girl and learned how to cut and polish rock. She is now one of Zimbabwe's most well-known artists. Agnes Nyahongo carves many of her sculptures from a type of rock called serpentine. Serpentine is a metamorphic rock. The type of serpentine she uses for her sculptures is very dark in color. She usually polishes only some parts of her sculpture, leaving the rest simply raw stone. And you can see that here, how she polished parts of it, and other parts um, are kept rough, like, they, like the stone is. Okay, the rock cycle. Rocks you see in the world around you might seem like permanent fixtures. Given enough time, however, all rocks change. They are created, destroyed, and recreated in a continuous cycle. Geologists call this ongoing process the rock cycle. The rock cycle has no starting or ending point. You can jump in anywhere to see how it works. Let's begin with magma erupting from a towering volcano. The magma, now lava, cools and hardens into igneous rock. Over the course of thousands of years, sun, wind, rain, and freezing temperatures cause the rock to weather or break down into smaller pieces. The pieces continue to weather slowly, breaking down into sediments. Howling winds, flowing water, and gravity gradually move the sediments down the sides of the volcano and beyond. Movement of sediments from place to place is called erosion. And this is showing how when the magma flows down the volcano, the igneous rock is formed. Imagine that the sediments end up in a lake where they settle to the bottom. Over long periods of time, more layers of sediments are deposited on top of them. Compacting and cementing processes eventually turn the deeply buried sediments into sedimentary rock. Now imagine that the sedimentary rock is near the edge of a tectonic plate. The plate collides with another, very slowly of course. Tremendous heat and pressure generated by the collision turns the sedimentary rock into a metamorphic rock. As the plates continue colliding, their rocky edges crumble. All right, here is the rock cycle. So it's showing you how a rock can turn from one kind to another. So igneous rocks, when you add magma, can turn into um, metamorphic rock. These sediments pushed together cause a sedimentary rock. So these rocks are always changing um, very slowly over time. This is showing the weathering. So weathering is like breaking down of the rocks. And the erosion is moving it from one place to another. The metamorphic rock is slowly pushed up higher onto Earth's surface. Think mountains. Exposed to air, rain, and snow, the rock begins to weather and erode. So that's what's happening here. Alternatively, one tectonic plate might be sliding beneath another. The metamorphic rock along the edge of the descending plate gets hotter and hotter as it nears the mantle. At some point, it melts into magma, magma that someday might erupt from a volcano again. Understanding how rocks change helps geologists understand how Earth has changed over time. Okay, your questions, which is not a way people use rocks. Blank are naturally occurring materials made of solid, non-living substances called minerals. Rocks with larger mineral, mineral grains have a blank texture. Number four, give me two ways that rocks can be different. Blank rock forms when magma cools and solidifies. Why was obsidian a prized material for ancient tool makers? Blank rock forms over time in layers. Blank rock forms when rocks are exposed to extreme heat or pressure. Tectonic plates are important in rock formation. Metamorphic rock was created before igneous and sedimentary rocks, true or false. 
and the blink is an ongoing process in which rocks are created, destroyed, and recreated. All right, that's it for reading. Let's hop on over to skills. We're going to start with some vocab review. So remember that all your vocab definitions are up here in the reading. So use that. So which one of these words is a process or force that moves sediments to new locations? The building blocks of rocks that consist of non-living substances, which is the correct word. And then you're going to do a little bit of note taking on one of these volcanoes we learned about called Tambora. So you're going to use this passage. We already read it a couple days ago. And you're going to tell me what is the volcano name? Where is it located? When did it last erupt? A description of the eruption. So what did it look like? What was it like when it happened? And then any other facts that you found about the volcano. So I'm going to read this quickly and then I will let you get started. So it was called the year without a summer. In the spring of 1815, a volcano called Tambora erupted in Indonesia. It was the largest volcanic eruption in recorded history. Tambora's eruption blasted enormous amounts of ash high into the atmosphere. In the months that followed, winds distributed the ash around the globe. The fine ash particles in the air blocked some of the sunlight reaching Earth's surface. Less sunlight meant less warmth. Because of Tambora, the weather was much colder than normal in 1816. There were hard frosts in New England all summer long. A foot of snow fell in eastern Canada in June. Weeks of cold rain killed most of the crops in Europe. People called 1816 the year without a summer. All right, so go ahead and take your notes here. And that is all for today. Have a wonderful day. I will see you all next time. Bye, fourth graders.